Hi everyone. So today we'll be looking at this problem under integration. We shall show the first part first of all uh, by using uh, trigonometric identities to show that this is equal to this. Then uh, try to prove that the integral of this whole thing is equal to this that we have here. So it's important to note that what we have here is the same as what we have there. Meaning that once we show this by um, trig identities, we just have to come and substitute this with this, then we can easily uh, show uh, the later part. So, okay, so from there, there, we shall bring in the limits, the upper limit, lower limit, then we must come to this. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, so for the identity, the first part, we shall start by working with the left hand side, which is this part here. So left hand side. So what we have is two sine x minus the sine of two x. Everything is over one minus cos two x. So we can clearly see here that we have double angles. So we need to bring in a double angle identities. So for sine. The double angle of sine is 2 sine x cos x, like that. Then uh, the double angle identity for cos, we shall use this one, 1 minus 2 sine uh, square x, like that. Okay, then from there, we can factor out what is common in the numerator which is uh, 2 sine x, open bracket, what remains with is 1 minus cos x. The whole thing is divided by, so what we have here is simply 1 minus 1 plus sine, that's a 2, sine square x, like that. Okay. So let's continue with it here. Numerator, we have 2 sine x, 1 minus cos x, like that, divided by this one and this one will cancel, leaving us with only 2 sine square x, like that. Okay, so these two here and these two here can simply uh, cancel out. Then what we're remaining with is this part and this part. So we can also see that the sine and the sine can cancel. This sine can cancel from all of these, leaving us with only 1 minus cos x in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have sine x because one sine has cancelled. So we just minus sine. Now, if you look at what we have, uh, it's the opposite. So meaning that we have to rationalize this. So to rationalize this, we shall rationalize the numerator by multiplying by the conjugate, which is 1 plus cos x divided by 1 plus cos x, like that. Okay. So what we have in the numerator now, let me bring it here. What we have in the numerator is simply uh, the difference of two squares which is 1 minus cos x, like that, in brackets, 1 plus cos x, divided by just 1, one sign there like that, and then 1 plus cos x. So let's apply the difference of two squares in the numerator. So according to the difference of two squares, this means that in numerator we have 1 minus cos square x, like this, over sine x, 1 plus cos x. Okay, so now, uh, here we're going to use uh, the concept from the Pythagorean identity from trigonometry that will help us uh, get our final answer. We know that sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. So, from this identity, what we can simply do is we can make um, sine square the subject of which we'll have sine, let me just write it here like this, okay, sine square x 
is equal to 1 minus cos square x. So we can see that 1 minus cos square is uh, as good as sine square. So we can do the substitution. So back to our part here, this is as good as sine square x divided by sine square x multiplied by 1 plus cos x, like that. Then lastly, of course, we can cancel one sign with, um, this is not square, it's not square, with that sign, meaning that in the numerator, we just made one sign, which is just sign x, over 1 plus cos x. Okay, so this is actually what we're looking for, so this is what we have here. So this is just the first part of the question where you have to prove the identity, which we have done. Now let's go into the second part where we have to evaluate the definite integral. Okay, so this is the second part of the question. So now, uh, because we applied an identity, I'm just bring it back, because we, sh we, we had shown that this is equal to this part, we can substitute this whole part uh, with um, the identity that we were showing because that was the whole purpose of proving the identity first. So let's substitute the whole thing with the identity so that we have the integral. I'll leave out the, the limits for now. The integral of sine x over 1 plus cos x. Okay. So this is a simpler version compared to that one. So now that we have this, the only thing we need to do is we have to um, work on this to show that this is equal to lean 3 over 2. Okay, so integrating this, we shall use um, the u substitution where we get the whole denominator in this case to be related to b equals to u. We simply say let the whole denominator, which is 1 plus cos x, b equals to u. Then from there, we have to differentiate. So differentiating gives us to u being equals to the derivative of one is zero, of course, the derivative of cos is negative sine x dx. Okay, so now that since we have the x in our question there, we have to make the x a subject of the formula here. So making the x a subject to the formula will give us uh, u over negative sine x like that so having done the substitution of u let's now substitute in the actual integral so that we have the integral of sine x over remember this whole thing is u according to this assumption the x has now become the u over negative sine x like that so now, uh, the sine and the sine, of course, can cancel out, leaving us with a negative integral. The only thing we have now is 1 over u. This negative result has gone outside the integral. And we have changed the order from the x to the u. So the derivative, or rather the integral of 1 over u, is simply uh, lean u. Now, this lean u that we have here uh, has limits. This integral has limits. So we cannot add the constant of integration plus c because we have limits. The limits are from pi over 3 to pi over 2. So since we have limits, we can say now let's apply the limits. These are our limits here. Pi over 2. But we cannot apply the limits here where you have u because the original equation had x. So we shall say negative lean remember what our u is our u according to this is one plus cos x with limits from pi over three to pi over two like that okay then let's do our substitutions now so applying the upper limit pi over two which is just the same as uh, 90 degrees this will give us lean, uh, open bracket. So let me just have one big negative on the outside. So have lean one 
plus cos pi over 2. So this is the upper limit. We close it. We subtract the lower limit now. The lower limit, which is uh, pi over 3. Pi over 3, which is as good as 60 degrees. Like that. Okay. I need two of these. Like that. Okay. So from there, we can say this gives us now cos pi over 2 or cos 90 is just 0. So this leaves us with only lin 1 plus 0. Like that. Lin 1 plus 0. So minus lin. Then here we have 1 plus. Now uh, cos pi over 3 is simply half is 1 over 2 like that okay so let's continue with it remember we have to show that this is equals to lin 3 over 2 so we still have the negative outside this just leaves us with lin 1 now lin 1 is 0 minus this is a 1 plus half 1 plus half is as good as 1 and half which is 3 over 2 like that now, this negative and this negative will just give us a positive in 3 over 2. So, this is what we're looking for because the question said show that it's equals to 3, 3 over 2. So, this is how this question is done. So, it's important that you know how to do the trig identity first before you come to this. Because once you do the trig identity, you just come and use your substitution, then the question will become straightforward. I hope it was, um, it was making sense for you guys. Thank you very much.